Hello, you. What she's been to. Hello. She is. Hello. Smiley girl. So it was a, a normal birth. Absolutely thrilled to welcome yeah. her into the family. Yeah. When did you notice there was a, a problem? What happened? So nine weeks. She was nine weeks, and she caught bronchiolitis, and it, it's just a normal. Babies tend to get it, and they're admitted. Uh, she was in for about a week um, before we were discharged home, and then. Her breathing, the way she breathed, she never breathed normally. She always had a recession. She always had a tug at the top of her, her airway there. And um, she, she just seemed to deteriorate. Mm. She... Well, at 15 weeks, she was back in hospital yeah. again and things got a whole lot more serious mm -hmm. and they did various tests and that's when you received this diagnosis. Yeah, so we were... She had a respiratory arrest. Um, we were rushed to a specialist hospital and... Um, it was there that they underwent uh, a lung biopsy and we got the diagnosis of ACD. Yeah. And then ACD is alveolar capillary dysplasia. Yeah. And, uh, and sort of quite very rare. Um, yeah. 200 children in the world each year. I mean, that really is very, very yeah. rare, isn't it? Yeah. So what was discussed at the time? Was a transplant mentioned? No. So we, um, when we spoke to them, they basically said it was just about time and making her comfortable and just... Unfortunately, there was no cure, there was no treatment for this. Um, so um, that's kind of how they left it with us. And that's the worst thing yeah. you could ever hear as yeah. a parent. It's that there was waiting for your baby you to do. die. And not something that you were prepared no. to do. I no. mean, you just thought, I am no. not, this is not going to no. happen, she's not going anywhere. No. So you did yeah. some research. Yeah. And, and what found did you find out? out? So we, I joined the ACD um, association site and I got talking to a couple of people and it turned out America had lung transplanted on babies as young as Imogen. Mm. Yeah. OK. And also, uh, for, for, for you as parents, you say that it was like being run over by a bus every day. Yeah, every time. Yeah. Um, she's my first child, so it's very hard. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and also seeing her on life support as well uh, in the ICU must have been really heartbreaking. It's the worst. Well, you found out that um, in America that transplants had taken place on, on children um, as, as young as her um, and you were receiving treatment at Great Ormond Street and they did agree to look into your case. Yeah. It wasn't a guaranteed thing, but at least there was suddenly yeah. this tiny, yeah. tiny little glimmer of light at the end. It was the fact that they hadn't given up. Mm. What, she hadn't given up, so why should anyone else yeah. give up? And very quickly, a week later, you found out that she was eligible for yeah. a transplant and she was now on this waiting list. Mm -hmm. So you have jumped hurdles mm -hmm. to get to this point. Mm -hmm. This is incredible. But actually, this is where the, it begins, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, your journey, your journey, you go from one extreme to the other. Mm. It was just one, one hurdle, like you say, one hurdle after another. And then... To be accepted was one thing. Mm -hmm. It was the the emotions were just. It was excitement. It was fear, and it was the realism that in fact, this is this is really serious. This is what my baby needs to survive. And now you've got to wait. Yeah, and then it was the waiting game. And it, in Imogen's with Imogen's condition, it was which came first: her deteriorating, or the transplant. Mm. Um. So. When she made all the matches, blood matches, mm -hmm. and of course the tragic thing here is for you to get that call. It means that someone else mm -hmm. is going through the worst possible yeah. time in their life. Yeah. And so, what was said when you got the call? So they they phoned. Yeah. Uh, we were at our local hospital at that time, and we got a phone call to say that there had been a donor found, and um, did we still want to go ahead with the transplant? Um, we obviously said yes. Uh, it was, it was, it was mayhem. They wanted us there. Yeah, um, really quickly. And scary. Yeah. Because you know, as you said, this even the surgeon said to you before going down into the, into theatre. I've, I've never done this before on a child of her of her age on yeah. someone so small. Yeah. So with that comes risks. Yeah. But then, what other choice, I guess, did you have? Yeah, that was it. We didn't have a choice. There wasn't a choice. There was nothing. There was no other route to go. There was, there was no other potential treatment for 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 her. So how long was the wait? Uh, seven, seven and a half, and a half hours. hours. Seven and a half hours. Yeah. yeah. Too. Try and get something to eat and sleep. Go to, yeah, go no to. chance. No, no chance. But that felt like the longest seven hours of your life, yeah. didn't it? And so when you finally got to see her, mm -hmm. um, how long was it before you n noticed the difference? 
Um, so she was out of intensive care after around 10 days. Um, it was very strange to see her breathe normally. I bet. Um, she always, um, she, she obviously had a significant breathing issue um, and she was always burning calories just to breathe. So now it was about getting her to put those calories back on to become what we see little monkey. Today. Yeah. So you were able to take her home after about a month? Was yeah. It about yeah. I mean, that in itself is extraordinary, isn't it? That you go through something like that and a month later you, you get to bring her home. She gets yeah. to live her life. Yeah. And uh, there is further treatment that she will, she yeah. will need and yeah. medication, obviously, mm -hmm. anti-rejection drugs yeah. is something that she will have to take for the rest of her yeah. life.